Guys, it's you know, welcome to a battle I actually had uh, for the LBA, another one of those things, that's super fun. Anyway, I'm up against uh, Greel, owner of the Pori Arcanines. Um, I believe this is actually round 18, and uh, if I win this game, I clinch playoffs. So, that is of course a goal of mine. Actually, no, this round 16. Anyway, yeah, that that's beside the point. No, it's round 17. I'm getting all mixed up now. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, I'm playing Greel, owner of the Pori Arcanines. He has already clinched the playoffs, but uh, as you guys will see by this battle, he is not holding back by any means. And of course, if I do win, I clinch the playoffs. So let's go ahead and look at his team. Um, he is known to be the creator of some really cool sets. Uh, throughout this year, he's brought some stuff like uh, Dual Screens Raikou for uh, Mega Metacham, which is crazy. And uh, I was looking through his replays, and I saw that he never brought Baton Pass on Skullipede. It was al almost always an SD set. So at the last second, D-Train and I were talking, and he was like, yo, bring Weezing, it hard walls it. So um, pretty good calling D-Train's part, as you guys will see. Anyway, he has Raikou, Alakazam, uh, Skullipede, Mega Metacham, um, Skarmory, and Ya Boy. Ya Boy, Ya Boy, Melodic. And looking at my team, I have pretty standard fare for this week, except I didn't bring Mega Gyarados. I opted for Mega Ments because I felt that Ments matched up better with a lot of his team, uh, just because it did have the potential to go mixed a lot better um, in order to break past stuff like Skarmory. Because, you know, Skarmory can pretty commonly carry the Shed Shell, which, you know, would render it mildly useless for Gothitelle. But anyway, those are the first two members of my team. Also uh, have Weezing, Clefable, Thunderous, and Excadrill. So let's go ahead and kick this one off. Um, it does get a little slow at some points in the battle, but your boy D-Train, who uh, very nicely recorded this for me this week, uh, sped that part up, so we shouldn't be here that long. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and lead with Excadrill as he ends up leading with Raikou. So a very good lead situation for me. Um, I will force him out no matter what. I believe right here, I I really wanted to to double to goth tell but you know didn't want to make super early predictions in case he whipped out like the uh, spec shadow ball or whatever um anyway so i'm gonna go into goth tell right here and uh he, as he just goes for the rocks which is fine i kind of expect him to have the shed shell here and switch which is why i go for the uh psy shock but he's just gonna go straight away for the brave bird and uh thankfully i'm not specs this week um, I'm actually Culberberry because my fear in this battle was that he would bring Crooked Isle and try to pursue trap me. So I'm actually uh, Culberberry for attacks, and uh, because I felt that that helped me best handle the the situation of me, like because I could just energy ball as Crook and uh, take a pursuit, it'd be pretty easy. Anyway, so he uh, ends up whirlwinding me out into my Salmons, and I'm gonna reveal that I'm actually Mixments with Hydro Pump. Um, he doesn't see Life Orb here here because I'm actually Lumberry. Um, to break past a lot of stuff. He goes out into Buster, which is his Mega Meta Chain right here. And since I am not running max speed, I will be forced to switch out into Clefable, which can actually take uh, a high jump kick and Zen Headbutt as long as I get uh, these so-called predictions right. But he just goes for the Fake Out, which is fine. It's going to do a good amount of damage considering I'm max physically defense. Or max physical defense, rather. Um, but he's just going to switch out, seeing that he can't really do a whole lot right here. And he's going to go into his Calypso, which is his Milotic. And let me tell you, people, um, th this this part in the battle got kind of bad. Um, if he was competitive, I feel like it would have been a lot worse. Um, but, you know, it's okay. Um, anyway, a little bit after turning, because you do have two very fat walls in here. He's going to go for the Scald, and he's basically fishing for Scald Burns to try to scout whether I'm unaware or whether I am a Magigard, spoiler, I'm Magigard, as I just get my rocks up, which is fine by me, because, you know, um, now that Skarmory is gone, he has no way to remove them, it'll be very, very nice for getting some constant damage on stuff like Raikou, uh, which is troubling, because it's faster than my entire team, but I'm just gonna go for the Moonlight here, as, uh, he does end up getting the burn with this Scald, so, you know, not too unreasonable, um, and as you guys will see, I will take no burn damage, so of course I am running Magic Guard, so I am the CM set. I'm CM Rocks, because I didn't really feel like I needed the coverage this week. I'm just going to go out into Gothitelle right here, and uh, see if I could uh, do the thing where I can weaken this. But as you guys will see, this thing is crazy bulky. Like, absolutely crazy bulky. And it's actually kind of a problem for my team. Um, if... And this is the part in the battle where I kind of wish I had brought a sub DD Gyarados because I just could have set up all over this and it would have been a wrap. But um, I got a crit with that Thunderbolt right there. That did 50%. And I'm actually going to live on one uh, due to the burn. So that's pretty cool. I'm just going to fire off another Thunderbolt. Thought about going for Psy Shock, which probably would have done more damage. 
Um, but, you know, I figured that it wouldn't have been more than 56% and he was just going to recover it all off anyway. If I, And that's like kind of the one disadvantage of not bringing a choice item is that you can't just trick it. So, as you guys can see uh, by the speed of the battle right here, we're going to be here a while. Because what he is actually going to reveal right here, I think on this turn, is that he is actually psych... No, he's not... Ah, dang it, I spoiled it because he went for the ice beam. Anyway, what we're going to see... It's this for is yeah, it's this turn. He is actually psych up my Lodic, which is scary, of course, because uh, it prevents me from boosting like plus six plus six, because I could pretty much just handle his entire team from that point forward. So, you know. Um also if he psych ups my plus six plus six, then I can't beat it with Thundee, which is kind of an issue. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna use his time right here, that's kind of a slow point, to give some shout outs to some people. Uh, mainly the people who help make this LBA content sort of thing possible. Um, first of which, we have uh, D-Train, who um, does upload these uh, LBA-style battles. If you guys want to go check him out, link to his channel will be in the description below. He's a really cool guy. Um, he helps me team build um, occasionally and records all these battles for you so that they're not brought to you like via webcam, which would be just like greatest quality ever. So, you know, that that is very nice of him. He does a very good job of uh, getting all of the stuff over to me at a relatively quick weight, quick weight, <laughs> quick rate, rather. Um, so, you know, big shout out to him. Um, really, really means a lot to have you behind me, man. Um, and hopefully we can uh, run into each other again in the Aqua Division playoffs because the London Dragonites, which is his team, uh, have clinched a playoff berth at this point in the season. Um, and I guess second person I really want to give a shout out to, um, is Wyatt, aka Mr. Murkrow. Link to his channel will also be in the description. He also does upload these as, in addition to, uh, some lives and stuff, all that great stuff. Um, he's a really cool guy. Um, he is now genning my mods because, uh, Dylan had to update his 3DS because he, uh, was able to join the league. So that is, of course, pretty cool. Um, regardless, though. A uh, big shout out to you, man. Um, uh, if I like didn't have these hyper specialized sets that you gen me and all that stuff, um, then you know I probably would not win that many games. And you know, as you guys can see, like even with these like super specific sets, it's still pretty easy to lose games. Um, so yeah, a big shout out to you too. You guys uh, have really made a lot of this season possible, and. Uh, yeah, I think that that's gonna wrap wrap up like the shout out portion. Anyway, what's going on right here is that I'm actually just trying to PP stall him, um, because I know that if I can uh, run him out of scalds and ice beams, he'll be forced to switch out. And that's my dog. Come on, buddy. It's okay. Get up on the bed. Come on, boy. Okay. Yeah, okay. He's just being a jerk right now. So hopefully he doesn't bark again. Um, but if he does, it's okay. Come here. All right. There we go. Uh, he is up on the bed now. Hopefully he will be quiet. Anyway, back to the battle. Um, I'm just clicking Stealth Rock a lot right here. I'm also clicking Moonblast occasionally because I do want to try to get some damage off and uh, force him to burn his recovers because that is also very important because um, if he runs out of recovers first, then it basically is a lot easier for... Uh, like, if he runs out of recovers, then I can just continue to click CM until he, I, until I can whittle him down. Um, because he will not be able to recover, which is super nice for me. Um, anyway. So, yeah, I understand this is kind of a slow part, so I thank you all who are sticking with it um, right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, he is finally going to withdraw, withdraw because I do believe he ran out of scalds and ice beams at that point. And in real life, that was a cool, cool 25 minutes. Uh, I think D-Train said he sped it up to like 3,000%. Brought it down from like... 25 to 3 ish anyway so uh he is actually focus ash alakazam right here which you know doesn't really surprise me i do drop a special attack which is a little bit crucial but not a lot he wouldn't have been able to two it ko me anyway and at this point i do only have one moonlight left um so i'm gonna go ahead and burn that right here so now i can avoid any um cm wars with the Milotic, seeing as A, I have no recovery, and B, he's out of attacking moves, I think. He may have, like, one or two Scalds left, um, but either way, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take out his Alakazam right here, continue to get ahead in the battle, and he's going to go out and do his Scolipede right here, I think. Uh, maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Yeah, he does end up going out in a Scolipede right here. This thing is very scary, um, because even 
the, like, after a couple switch ins to rocks, then he can two it KO me on the switch with a plus two rock slide. Uh, life orb, of course. Actually, I, I don't think he's life orb this week. Yeah, he's not. Anyway, um, Weezing is a. Weezing, if he's not life orb, is actually a pretty good stop because I can just burn that thing whenever. He does end up going out to Raikou right here, which, you know. If something is going to go ahead and take some uh, burn damage, Raikou is not a bad thing outside of uh, Scolipede to take it because it is very, very hard for me to wear down. Because uh, I think, as I, I think I said this earlier, um, all of all the members of my team are actually slower than Raikou, um, except with the exception of Scarf Drill. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and go out into Salamence right here to take potentially a Shadow Ball, um, which I do believe we see right here. Uh, no, we see an extra sensory, but you know. Kind of the same thing. He's going to be able to knock me out with two of those. Um, I do believe he's AV. He, I, I'm almost 100% sure he's AV this week. And that would make a lot of sense as a good stop to uh, your boy Thunderous. Anyway, so he just Volt Switches here, picks up the easy KO, and goes back out into Zendrax, which is a Skullipede. Um, but after two switch ins to Rocks, I can, like, it's getting worn down pretty easily now. I can just go out into Excadrill. He does not have um, a ground immunity remaining. Um, I kind of did this to scout to see if he was going to have the protect, because I feel like he would have gone for it right there. Um, but he does actually make um, a good double out into Calypso, which is, of course, the Milotic. So, kind of a misplay uh, right there, because, you know, I had the momentum and I kind of burned it and handed it back off to him. Um, so, kind of a lost chance there, but thankfully it it didn't end up hurting me that much in the course of things. He just ends up going back out into Raikou right here, as uh, I do believe I switch out. So, you know, look at that. Everybody's just switching around. Um, what do I go? I, yeah, I go into Clef right here. And at this point, Clef, um, the only thing it's probably going to be useful for is checking the Metacham. Um, but I do have Thunderous, which is actually Nasty Plot HP flying um, this week. So once I can weaken this Raikou a little bit, I can just completely win the game with the other thing so anyway he's gonna switch into rocks and this moon blast will actually knock him out which is very very helpful for me um got a crit not quite sure if it mattered because like scolipede is not that bulky so you know if it did matter i apologize but i don't think it did anyway he's gonna go out into buster right here which is his mega meta champ and i don't really have any other choice than to sack this right here he does make the good play of going for the zen head but uh not and not the fake out as I go into no regrets which is the wheezing um, because I wanted to see if he would go for the zen headbutt or try to switch out or whatever but he just ends up going for the zen headbutt knocking me out a little bit of a misplay on that on my part because I would have liked to have that later in the game to fodder uh, versus Raikou to get momentum but he's gonna go ahead and switch out right here into his Milotic um, which, you know, doesn't trouble me that much because, like, I'm a Thunderous, but I'm just gonna reveal the HP flying right here. It was my best play, um, and, you know, doesn't really help for me to, uh, preserve that late game for any reason, so I'm just gonna go with the Thunderbolt here. I do end up finishing this Milotic off, so very, very helpful for me, for me, as, uh, now I do believe it's 2-2. Two -two. Uh, he goes out into this, though, and, uh, his win, I think his win condition right here was having Aura Sphere, but the problem was is that if he had Aura Sphere, Thunderous would be able to outpace him, and I don't think that was a risk he was willing to take, as he is, or, as we are going to see the Shadow Ball right here. Um, so Excadrill will be able to take that relatively well, because Excadrill is a champ, and I'm just going to go for the Iron Head, which was actually a misplay. Um, wasn't trying to be a jerk and go for the flinch, but, you know, like, if I got it, it didn't, like, it wouldn't have mattered anyway whether I clicked EQ or Iron Head, um, because as you guys are going to see, I click Iron Head right here, and he misses a high jump kick, so a little bit of a salty ending, but I don't think it really mattered, because I just could have gone into Thunderous anyway, um, but end up defeating Grill, so... Um, very good game this week, my man. Um, sorry for the, uh, like, PP stalling portion towards the middle. Um, Grill actually does breed, so he's a at a little bit of a disadvantage there, but, you know, nothing I can do about that. Um, can't really solve that, so, um, anyway, that's gonna go ahead and wrap up, um, today's LBA game. If you guys did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like, as it really does help show support for the stuff that I'm doing here on the channel. Also, make sure to answer today's comment, question, of the video, um, which is, um, let me see, what's a good comment question video for today? Um, out of, 
Okay, th th this is one that I like kind of really want the answer to because I would be pumped to do more LBA stuff probably over the summer uh, if I come back when I come back next season. Um, would you guys be interested in seeing more LBA content? Because I feel like it's kind of at a point right now to where it's like, oh, like I'm just bringing you guys these battles. They're not like super connected in any way b besides like the record um, and the fact that they're in the same season. They're, they're not that connected. So if I did like weekly recaps and uh, updates on the entire league, w would you guys be up to see that? And with that, I urge you guys to subscribe if you guys are enjoying the constant content. And with that, I'll catch you on the flip-flop.